We of course very recently learned that the Nintendo NX will rather surprisingly not be coming out until March of next year, which of course has led to many questions, and the Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishima has addressed some of these uh, about the NX in an investor briefing Q&A. Now the first thing, first thing that he touched on is whether or not they will be selling the NX at a loss like they did with the Wii U. And he said, quote, We are not thinking of launching the hardware at a loss. When Wii U was launched, the yen was very strong. I'm assuming that situation will not repeat itself. Selling a loss at launch will not support the business, so we were keeping that mind in developing NX. Now, of course, this is actually fairly unusual when it comes to consoles. Both the PS3 and PS4 were sold at a loss at launch for Sony, and the Xbox 360 also sold at a loss for Microsoft, and it's fairly likely that the Xbox One did as well. So at least in the last couple of generations, it has kind of been the theme for a console to sell at, at a loss at launch, of course, including the Wii U itself as well. So it seems that they have got some cost-cutting measures in mind when it comes to the hardware and it possibly could point to a lower cost GPU with higher performance, maybe Polaris or something like that. I say lower cost, not like it's free, but less expensive than you might expect. Maybe just cut a few of those pennies, if you cut a few pennies without compromising too much on the quality, you can of course save a lot of money all round and then of course get cheaper with future production iterations. But of course, the main questions on most people's minds are, are the, is the power of the NX going to suffer or is it going to be a heftier price tag? It might be a power thing, to be honest. I don't see Nintendo trying to price themselves too high, but I could be wrong. We could see neither of these things happen. They've just found a way to give us what they want to give us without compromising too much on the power and still manage to make profit or at least break even with each uh, console sold. For unfortunately we don't know which one of these it is until we know what the machine actually is, the terms of the specifications and that sort of thing. It is entirely possible that it will be more expensive than you might expect or have less power than you might expect. Or it could be neither of those things, we just don't know. Now, another thing that's obviously going to add pressure onto Nintendo here is, of course, we allegedly have the PS4 Neo and upgraded Xbox One looming on the horizon, so the NX has even more pressure on its shoulders to strike that very difficult balance between price and power, and of course, the original models of the PS4 and Xbox One will most likely have a price cut as well when these updated models are released, so the NX is going to have a lot to think about when it comes to the pricing and that sort of thing. So I don't see them going for a higher price tag for that reason. So they might cut power or they might not. They might find a way to give us the power that they think the Nintendo NX needs for a cheaper cost, as I've said a couple of times. However, what many people are going to be wondering about is what about the games? What games are we going to get? Sadly, Kimishima did not go into details, but he did touch on the launch lineup and he assured us that they've got it covered. And he said, quote, You are correct about needing a solid lineup of software. One of the reasons for choosing the launch timing that we did is so that the software lineup will be ready in time for the hardware launch. Not only at launch, but we also need to be able to continuously release titles after launch. We are planning for this to be a platform that consumers can enjoy for a long time. So there you have it, those are the main comments that Kimishima made in this investor briefing Q&A. There are a, few, a couple of the things that Kimishima addressed in this particular Q&A summary. I will include a link in the description below this video where you can give uh, the full thing a read. And I've touched on the most important parts here, but there are a couple of things I have missed out. So I suggest you take a look if you're interested. So, can the NX actually succeed? And I think, yes, it absolutely can. Because despite the bumbles that Nintendo made with the Wii U, they still have a lot of consumer goodwill. And of course, they still have some very strong IP and of course have released some new IP with Splatoon and seem to be open to making new IP and finally moving it to mobile and that sort of thing. So it seems that Nintendo are very, very slowly, as they tend to do, changing with the times. Now, one thing is absolutely critical, at least in my opinion, as I've said many times now, is for them to just have a normal controller. It sounds silly, but that is one of the main things that just killed the Wii U. That, plus its lower processing power compared to the PS4 and Xbox One, has of course equaled a very low performing console, especially when you compare it to the Wii and of course the PS4 and Xbox One themselves. They have all outsold the Wii U in less time. 
So they need to not have another Wii U on their hands. And I think not having another second screen, just having a more normal controller, just, you know, your normal thing with buttons or whatever. It's probably going to have that weird Nintendo twist like it always does, but as long as it doesn't have another second screen, I think we're probably good, and we won't see that impacting the NX as well. It needs to be powerful, it needs to... Ed probably beats the current PS4 and Xbox One, especially if we do end up seeing the PS4 Neo. Because of course, if you're going to be asking probably about, you know, £350 plus for a new console from Nintendo, and you've got the PS4 Neo in the market, well, you kind of have to say, hey, we're at least co vaguely comparable to this thing, and hey, by the way, we've got Zelda or whatever. So, it seems like they're pretty confident in the launch lineup, at least, which is definitely going to help, of course. The main thing that will sell a console, as well as power, is, of course, the games available. And that is one thing the Wii U just didn't have for a long time. It's only very recently that it got some really good system seller games. And, of course, the NX needs to start strong for them to bounce back from the shall we say, less than enthusiastic response to the Wii U. So it seems like they've got their heads on straight and they're very confident in what they've got planned for the NX. I think Zelda as a launch title would be huge. Of course, have cross-play, uh, not cross-play, sorry, a cross-launch on the Wii U as well, so Wii U owners don't feel stiffed because, of course, it's been marketed for the Wii U for a long time and just get it out there as an NX exclusive, um, not exclusive, sorry, with the Wii U and then maybe put a few other um, Wii U games on there as well like Splatoon, maybe Pokken Tournament to make me happy, that would be great. <laughs> so they've got a lot of options and I feel like maybe they've learned from their mistakes, maybe not. It's really hard to tell with Nintendo. They seem to be a bit deaf and blind sometimes when it comes to recognising, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this thing, but we'll see. Sadly, only time will tell, and it's going to be a while before we find out. They have said, of course, they will not be showing the NX at E3. Maybe at Gamescom, given that that's in August, but it's probably going to be a while regardless until we know what the NX is, and probably even longer before we know the specifications of the machine. So, speculate away, good friends. That is all that is left for now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.